Oh, dearie me. I've literally been awake for 15, 20 minutes. I woke up this morning and said, you know what will be good? Go downstairs right now, turn on your camera and film a video. That's a great idea. I have no idea how this is going to come out. I like videos where I sit without a script and I just talk, but they have a tendency to be a little bit rambly. And this one might be the most rambly because I've only been awake for less than half an hour. So apologies in advance if it is a bit rambly. Now, last night I did a live stream and during the live stream, I got talking about the state of VR right now. How is VR right now? How does it feel to be a VR content creator right now? How does it feel as someone who uses VR primarily and solely for gaming? Bear that in mind, this whole video is coming from the perspective of someone who uses VR for gaming. I'm not talking about it as a social aspect, I'm not talking about it in any kind of medical application or kind of work-based applications. I'm talking about it purely from a gaming perspective because that's how I engage with VR. So all my opinions are coming at it from, from that direction. Now I got talking about the state of VR because we're living through another VR is dead news cycle. Now I've been part of VR, part of the community and part of VR content creation for long enough to know that the VR is dead news cycle comes around at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. If they're feeling particularly spicy, you'll see it a couple of times every year. But we're living through it again right now. And normally I see these VR is dead headlines and I laugh them off and I say, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. VR's great. It's doing great. And it will get there in time. Now is the first time I've seen those headlines. And instead of just laughing them off, I can feel it in myself. Not that VR is dead. I don't believe that VR is dead. I think that statement is ridiculous. But I can feel the lack of enthusiasm. I can feel the lack of excitement. I can feel... It's not burnout because I'm very energized and I love making content, but it's something is lacking right now in VR. And I'm being very specific when I say right now. I mean right now. I mean last month, this month, maybe next month. This, this period of time that we've been going through for the past few weeks, it feels slow. It feels unexciting. It feels a little bit uninspired. And that's not to say there haven't been great VR releases and games in that time. Synapse is a fantastic VR game but it isn't enough to stave off the lack of excitement that I'm feeling currently and obviously that's being felt quite widely because I've seen other content creators share that exact same view and these articles are back so there has to be a reason why this is all surfaced at the same time I'm feeling it a few other creators are feeling it quite a lot of other creators are feeling it and the articles are back. Why is that? Now, I think I'm really just gonna tackle two points in this video. I'm gonna talk about VR in terms of gaming and VR content creation. I'll start off with the VR content creation thing. So, interest in VR right now and engagement on the topic of VR feels lower than ever. Now, I, I, I'm in a kind of a weird fortunate position that I can kind of see that metric in real time on a week by week basis, which is a really strange thing to be able to see. But last year, I had the best year I've ever had for content creation. It was a huge year for me. Most videos broke kind of 30, 40K and a lot of them went up to 100 and above. And that was pretty consistent and it carried me through. There were a few times last year where I had that crazy intrusive thought that was like, you could probably quit your job. You could probably do YouTube as your job. But I always fight that thought off because I'm smart enough to know that YouTube, for me at least, isn't sustainable and it isn't regular enough. But I did have that thought a few times last year when the going was really good and interest was very high throughout almost all of last year, peaking at Christmas, because it always peaks at Christmas, interest was great. The, the eating was good and VR content creation had a lot of enthusiasm, excitement and interest behind it from an audience perspective. This year, the drop off has been huge, absolutely huge, you know, and for me personally, this has probably been 
one of the worst years I've had for content creation around VR. Views are down. The videos die off much quicker than they ever did before. Uh, engagement in general around VR and, and search rates for VR topics and the VR games that are coming out, they're not garnering much interest from audiences. Now, I still want to play them. I still want to put the videos out there because the reason I do this is because I love playing video games and I like showcasing something and putting it online to help others make an informed decision about what to do with their money. And I know that VR is such a small niche right now that it's hard to go and get concrete opinions on VR products. If you're a VR lover, there's not a lot of VR footage, gameplay, explanation. It's not out there. It's not covered as widely as normal gaming is, flat screen gaming is. You know, you don't get big, huge reviews and previews on, you know, your IGNs, your game spots, etc. So it's important that content creators are out here putting that content out there to allow people to make decisions. But it, it, it is quieter. Interest is low much much lower than last year and it's why I've taken a few more sponsored videos you know people have offered sponsored videos and I've said yep yeah, you know what I'll do it because damn I've got some bills to pay so <laughs> there is this there is a drop off in interest from the VR community have a lot of those people who picked up a Quest 2 maybe at the start of last year coming off that real hype of the Quest 2 launching have they disappeared are they not interested anymore the last really big Quest 2 game, I think, was probably Resident Evil 4. And that was quite some time ago. Now, that's a preference thing, of course. Uh, that's my kind of game. That's a horror game. But that was the last big wow moment, I think, for the Quest 2. Then there was, of course, Bone Lab, which was a really exciting kind of cultural zeitgeist moment for VR. It, it went outside of the bounds of VR and it was starting to breach into just mainstream gaming and that did a lot as well. That drove a lot of interest to VR. But there haven't been any big, big, hitting, exciting gaming drops for VR and for Quest 2 really since then. We did have PSVR 2 at the start of the year, and that was a small boost. But Sony haven't laid out a plan for what they're doing with that headset. So people who picked it up don't really know when the next big, exciting game's coming. We're still living in a limbo whereby... The biggest thing for me is the Resident Evil 4 VR mode that's coming. And that's going to be huge, but I don't know when it is. And for me, that's the only big thing on the horizon that I'm excited about. I truly thought Sony were going to come into this swinging and have a full content strategy that was outlined to audiences and to consumers. They may have that, but it certainly isn't outlined to audiences and consumers. It's still very secretive. Now, one of the things I spoke about last night on the live stream was... When there's a big gap between big AAA VR releases, you feel that drought a lot more than you do with flat screen games. Now, flat screen games go through the same kind of cycles. Like, they don't have a big AAA release every single week. The next big flat game that I'm actually excited for and waiting for is Spider-Man 2, which is October, which is that's, that's quite some time away still. So if you're a PS5 owner, you're waiting months between the big hitters, the big games. But the difference with flat gaming is they have mainstays. Games that have huge audiences, games that you can go back to time and time again, sticky products that you can play 12 months of the year, your Fortnites, your Call of Duties, your Gran Turismos, your Fifas, those kinds of games that exist all year round, they're evergreen. VR doesn't really have that. I'd say Ghosts of Tabor is probably the closest example currently of something that's come out and it's managed to sustain a really healthy player base and it is something you can jump into time and time again. But outside of that, VR games feel like you play them and they're only hot for a week, maybe two weeks if you're lucky, and then they're gone. You forget about them and you're waiting for the next hit. So VR has a strange mentality. The games aren't as sticky, so we're always waiting for the next thing and even though the next thing is spaced apart in about the same span of time as flat gaming, it feels much more difficult. It feels much more painful. It's a strange place to be in, but the droughts feel much more meaningful in VR because we don't have the mainstays and we don't have as many studios working in VR. So we don't have a constant stream of games, even indie games, 
like they do in flat gaming. Because the indie studios in VR are our triple A studios, the end dreams of the world, the vertigos of the world, the fast travel games of the world. They are our triple A studios. So we're waiting for their next big game, but they can only do so much because they're a smaller, they're smaller studios. They can't be banging out games every single week. And if they did, the quality would take a huge, a huge hit and you wouldn't want that. So those studios are the equivalent of our rock stars, you know, our Ubisofts, our EAs. Um, and there's going to be time in between the next releases, but we don't have enough to fill in the gaps or enough that's meaningful for the mass audience of VR gamers. People want really chunky experiences. They want big RPGs in VR. They want proper driving sims. They want expansive campaigns with stories. That stuff isn't going to be built by one guy in his shed. And if it is built by one guy in his shed, it's going to take him a long time. Look at something like Vertigo 2. Zack didn't live in a shed, I'm sure, but it was one guy making that game and it took time, a lot of time, to get it to where it was. So VR is hard. Basically, what I'm trying to say is VR does feel quiet right now. It feels like interest is low, excitement is low. From a content creator perspective, I can see it. I can see it in the stats on the screen. I've seen it in fellow content creators channels. I've seen the drop off there. And others haven't been quite as harsh as mine. <laughs> Mine's been pretty, pretty rough. But I'm not saying VR's dead. VR is far from dead. We have Quest 3 to look forward to, energizing the audience once again, energizing the market with a brand new product which will definitely bring interest. We have Apple entering the scene, which for gamers won't immediately do much, but the knock-on effect of bringing eyes to XR, MR, AR, VR is huge. What people will start to develop out of that headset will have an impact on the wider, the wider VR scene, the wider medium. Now, gaming-wise, we have Assassin's Creed VR, Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord, Attack on Titan VR, Arizona Sunshine 2, Firewall, Bulletstorm VR, Resident Evil 4 VR mode for PSVR 2, Hellsweeper, an Aliens VR game from Survios, Crossfire Sierra, Madison VR, Stranger Things, Power Wash Simulator VR, Asgard's Wrath 2, Seventh Guest, Vampire Masquerade, I Expect You to Die 2, Prey Dogs Unreal Engine Injector VR mod, the VR modding scene which has never been stronger than it is right now, and indie VR developers becoming more experienced than ever. We have all of that to be excited for in the next 6 to 12 months time. There's so much good coming. There's so many reasons to be excited for VR and if you're passionate about the medium, this quiet period will feel like a distant memory once we get into the thick of it with all those games coming out and all the exciting new things coming. But right now, it does feel a little low on excitement. So if you're feeling it too, if you're seeing those VR is dead articles and you're like, oh, is it dead? Or you're like me and you're like, I know it's not dead, but I do feel a bit, a bit kind of low, a bit kind of not unenthused, but a little bit lacking excitement. If you feel like that, don't worry about it. Good stuff's coming. And this new cycle is cyclical. It comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. VR is dead is a statement that we will not escape for many, many years. I truly, genuinely believe that. VR isn't growing as quickly as I guess a lot of people expected it to. It's certainly growing, but what it does is it, it does this, and then it drops a bit, and then it plateaus. And then we will probably have another peak when Quest 3 comes out, and then it'll drop, and it'll plateau. It isn't this constant growth, or it doesn't feel like constant growth because people buy these things in bulk when the excitement's high, and then a lot of people, I think, don't continue to use them. It goes on a shelf, and that's where the excitement plateaus and it kind of stops for a while. So it's about making the experiences and creating the reasons for people to continue to play these things. And eventually we'll get there, but we're just not there yet. We don't have the evergreens. We don't have the things to keep us going. Hopefully that wasn't too rambly. It probably was. I've been talking for 17 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up here. VR's not dead. We're just hibernating right now. <laughs> Let's say that. Hope you've enjoyed, guys. If you have, please leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care. See you later.